you no, know, we are competent enough to take the decision, but the other person wants to know the person should come and tell us. So the real broker in India was that broker tells to the person that yes, you invest in this, you keep it, and then you sell it. So it requires a lot of persuasion by the broking community to bring more and more customers in the market. Well, there's also the nature of the trade and how it's going to happen. We're looking at 1.5 lakh crores. If you're looking at uh, volumes coming out of the futures and options space, and maybe 20 to 25,000 crores is what are coming from the cash market. And not more than 5 to 10 percent is actually delivery volume. So the rest of it is all trading volume. So it's, it's an Indian investor. It's a, funny, it's a funny conundrum. You have an Indian investor who's the classic speculative investor, and yet uh, very few people are doing it. So if it's got to do with the psyche, then there should be more people doing it. Like you always know that the Chinese are traditional gamblers. That's not the case in India. You know, is FNO the way to go? Is it going to be actual investing? Is it going to be investing versus trading? Who's going to win the war? As far as uh, uh, investors are concerned, there are different type of people who like to invest on long term. For them, uh, these people are there permanently and they are investing. And those volumes are also increasing. And certainly as the, uh, when we see the bull run coming in, all of a sudden we see that the number of inactive accounts becoming active all of a sudden. I think only 5% of the savings are going into the equity market. That is the problem. I think we have to tell the people that how investing in the share market is good. For that, the investor education is required. We are still not going into tier 2, tier 3 cities where we have to show them. Particularly this uh, derivative coming in, how they can contain their risk, particularly through the options. Uh, I think it is a tool which has to be told to them. It is, uh, if they uh, use it for hedging, it is a fantastic product. And secondly, lot many products are coming now where we have equity, we have uh, equity derivatives, we have commodity, we have uh, 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 currency, currency options are coming now. Our exporters can hedge it. I think the total market which are going to be happening is going to be mind-boggling. The question which will happen to the broking community is how to handle the large volume at a minimum cost. And for that, it requires the efficiency in terms of whether it is a client acquisition, it is a cross-selling of the multiple products. The same person, when he goes, he sells equity, he sells commodity, he sells distribution, he sells insurance. He sells, I mean, so we have to see when the person, uh, relationship manager is making a visit, he covers all the products or all the needs of that client. So he becomes a one-stop shop, so his cost of multi-time visiting and the time is much less. Trade at your convenience across all BSC segments through your mobile. BSC introduces mobile based trading. Aquagard ko sab kehte hain pani ka doctor. Pani kaisa bhi ho, Aquagard ko sab kuch pata hai. Aquagard total. Pani ka doctor. Call 39883333. Aaj hi. Arey, tumhari kaan thodi chote hai, nahi? Acha, do saal pehle bhi ekna chahiye tha, nahi? कुछ है तुम्हारा हाथ भी तो दो साल पहले तुम्हें नहीं पकड़ा था राज कुछ है तुम्हारी गर्दन थोड़ी टेढ़ी हो More than 500 million uh, Indians under the age of 25 and they are the ones who do everything on their mobile, they're very net savvy. Uh, they would probably like to do online trading as and when they start to save because as per numbers I've been told they are currently saving minus 2% so <laughs> that needs to get into the positive and when that actually works out then online trading, mobile trading, all of that will become uh, really very, very relevant uh, right now. Mr. Azare, how, how, is that the target audience? Yeah, the exactly. Ones? See, next uh, leap in this industry will come definitely from that segment of the customers because if you actually see there are around 630 million mobile users wherein hardly, I mean, 80 million DMAT account holders, active DMAT account holders, I'll say. So if you see that ratio, it is very, very skewed. And with, uh, with technology playing a very, very lead role and definitely the young generation being very, very technology savvy and also with the 3G spectrum coming into play, so the data transfer sphere becoming really, really fast and really, really efficient, which is one of the most critical factors in improving activity because price fluctuations happen pretty fast. 
So with these combinations, obviously, I mean, this is the generation which is to be tapped forward, and uh, that's going to be the growth engine for probably a lot of uh, broken houses in future. Well, there's a lot of scope for innovation in uh, in the equity markets. We've seen futures and derivatives as as a, as a segment that's really thrived and burgeoned, and it's become big. We've we've got introduction of currency futures in this market as well. Where is the scope for more innovation, and how do we take this industry forward, Mr. Nagpal? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think the one very very interesting point that was coming into my mind. You know, if you look at the average age of the customer with a broker, I mean that's partly very low. You know, look at it. I think. In most of the broken outfits, the average age of the customer would be not more than three to six months. You know, if you look at the pattern, the kind of business that it does with you, initially for the first time when he gets enrolled with you, he would be very active in your in your business, will be giving you a reasonably amount of good brokerages. But as the time progresses, either he loses his money or he is approached by somebody other, some other customer or a competition at a lower brokerages, then he shows a tendency to move on to the other broker or he ends up losing his capital because he has not been handheld properly. You know, if we can, we can build in a, a mechanism in place where this person, whenever he does, you know, we have to understand what has been the trading pattern of this customer. Has he been doing more of the business in FNO side? Has he been doing more of the business in option side or future side or delivery side? And depending on that, you know, we can build up small advisory modules which could be helpful to these customers in, you know, navigating through the markets. If that can happen, I think we can increase the average age of the customer from let's say X months to let's say two X months. If that happens, I think it takes care of most of the challenges. One, obviously, we're talking about you know, servicing a customer because acquiring a customer is a huge cost. If there's a customer who is sustaining for a longer period of time, I think you can make more money on him, hence you can sustain better. And uh, Mr. Kohl, to make these, uh, make the Indian bourses globally competitive, there's, there's a lot of trading, uh, FI trading that happens in Singapore uh, on the future side. For, uh, for Indian markets, what is it that we can do here sitting in India to attract more and more business right here uh, which makes our systems uh, competitive and also the products and also the time to trade? I think there are a few things which we can do to make Indian products globally competitive. Firstly, I think it has to be done from the government side. Our cost of transaction is very, very high as, as, as compared to the particularly the STT. If you look at it, the volume in India has grown substantially in options market, which has been primarily because of the lower transaction cost. Two, I think uh, we have to also as a exchanges to see whether how can we minimize the cost of transactions, where we are having you know separate compliance for each exchange, each segment. We have a separate clearing corporation. Same margin cannot be used across segments. I think as exchange, we need a single clearing house which can work across segments, across exchanges, and it can empower the investor to uh, use the same money and which is abroad that with the one uh, money he can trade on all the exchange all the segments i think that is where we have to look at it similarly the compliance if we can have a one set of uh, compliance document from the investor today we for each segment each exchange we have hundreds of documents from the client he says either i am borrowing the money from you or i am signing the client documents Third thing I would like to say, to be globally competitive, our trading platforms have to innovate substantially. I think they have to provide much more data, much more facility to him uh, to trade as well as invest. So uh, it will become uh, be educative to him, he will, it will facilitate to him. Right now they are just execution and trading tools if they are uh, far superior in terms of quality, uh, helping him in how to invest and trade, I think that will make us much, take us much ahead. So I, I think finally we've come to the end of the discussion. I'd just like to throw one final uh, question to all our panelists and, and that really would be uh, if you're looking at three critical success factors for growth in this industry over the next three years, what would they be? Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Shashi Bhushan. Uh, technology, of course, because uh, with uh, 60 crore mobile phones around, uh, it's, it's a huge opportunity. If you do a job well, uh, there is a significant shift uh, uh, from uh, offline to online. And I'm sure if we uh, get it uh, in, into simpler formats, uh, the mobile uh, penetration will definitely help grow the market. So technology is important. Two is the reach. Definitely we need to increase the reach, without which, you know, we, as I was mentioning earlier, we still will be fighting for the same pie. And three, and most important, there is a guarded acceptance of leverage in our business. Okay. And finance today significantly plays a role in helping those able customers to take that additional mileage on the markets. So finance, 
is critical to you know to help uh, get the size and i think that those are the three i think adding to that uh, i think investor education will be something which will be very very critical for a uh, very very healthy and robust growth of the industry in future banking transaction has to be strengthened because we receive the payments to within 2 3 days if the banking transaction are streamlined it will give a good pace of growth to the market how to leverage the network for cross selling the all the products so that your productivity from the same infrastructure goes up and i think the training the sales force to deliver those products i think training the people will be also very important our sales force yeah for me i think majority of the people, uh, points have been covered by the obvious gathering <laughs> but i would still go on to say that you know we have to have an uh, attitude wherein we can think of customers interest first i think you know within our own minds we just want to look at the customer as though we can make maximum maximum revenue out of this customer as soon as possible i think there needs to be uh, you know change in the mindset of the broking community as a as the intermediation community that we need to you know nurture the customer for him to sustain for a longer period of time and and if he sustain with us for a longer period of time he'll automatically cover his own cost at the same time he would be you know giving us lot lot, lot more revenue over a period of time and then obviously as he was pointing out technology being there and capital is going to be i think more and more important because as we reach into a you know bigger size and the economy takes a bigger size i think brokers have to be far more capitalized than they currently are right well i think that uh, summarizes it uh, perfectly there's no doubt that there's going to be explosive growth um, in retail broking in india the point is to make it a sustainable business model and there were some really interesting ideas thrown uh, out as to how that Uh, that whole business model can go forward clearly you need to address what the client wants client comes first costs are going to be an issue so we need to address that better technology better banking platforms all of that and i'm sure we're going to see that um, uh, in the year to come we never expected uh, 2010 to be as spectacular as it was uh, in the way equities performed but uh, i'm sure 2011 for the broken community is going to be an even better year Flipside Shahed's Funkola. In today's world, resources are limited, and size can take you only so far. By helping you make the most of all your strengths, Accenture enables organizations to balance size and nimbleness. So instead of merely seeing new opportunities, you can seize them. Accenture Consulting Technology Outsourcing High Performance Deliver
This is the